Father God, indeed, your son is the solid rock. Everything else is false. Everything else is wispy. Everything else will fade away. Your son, O oh God, is the Messiah. He is the one who came to save. And our trust only belongs in him. Lord, I pray for our time together now as we seek to remember him. I pray that you would give us minds and eyes and ears and a heart that can comprehend your word, that can comprehend the majesty of who your son is. Lord, I pray that all of this would be pleasing to you, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome once again to Grace Bible Church. We are here now at the time in our service where we remember Jesus. It is a very good thing for every believer to frequently and regularly remember Jesus Christ, their Savior, and who he is and what he did on the cross. We're going to be looking at a passage in Matthew chapter 11 today. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to Matthew 11? We have some men who are coming down the aisles. And uh, if you don't have a Bible with you this morning, would you raise your hand? They will give you a copy of God's Word. If you don't actually own a copy of God's Word, this is our gift to you. You can have this Bible so you can be reading God's revelation of himself for yourself. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is preaching in the region of Galilee. And John the Baptist is in prison. And the reason why John is in prison is because John has spoken out against Herod in Herod's unlawful marriage to his brother's wife. And John knows that his days may be numbered, and he sends his disciples to Jesus, John's disciples to Jesus, and he sends them with a question. We're going to be reading verses 2 through 5 today in chapter 11, and as we read, I want you to take note of the question, and then take note not only of how Jesus responds, but what he says in his response to the question. Now John, while imprisoned, heard the words of Christ. He sent word by his disciples and said to them, Are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. We see the question there in verse 3. The question is, are you the expected one? That's the question. Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that was proclaimed from the Old Testament? Are you the one to whom the Old Testament points? We see Jesus' response starting in verse 4. First of all, let's just note what Jesus doesn't say. He doesn't come out and say, yes, of course I'm the Messiah. Born of a virgin, pointed to by the Old Testament, of course I'm the Messiah. Instead, he says to John's disciples, report to John what you see and what you hear. John's disciples had been observing Jesus. They had been watching Jesus. They had been seeing Jesus. They had been seeing his public ministry, and they had been hearing his teaching. What they have been seeing and what they have been hearing is what Jesus says at the end of verse 5, that Jesus is preaching the gospel to people. The gospel is the good news. It's the good news that Jesus would preach it's a gospel of salvation through repentance and faith in the expected one, in the Messiah. That's what Jesus was preaching. That is what they're hearing. Then Jesus says, and the way that you know that the Messiah is the one who's been preaching this message to you is by the evidence that he points to in the beginning of verse 5. Blind are receiving sight. Lame are walking, lepers are cleansed, the deaf are hearing, the dead are being raised up. These are things that were not occurring from anybody else but the Messiah. The Messiah was the only one who would bring this about. So this was John's testament, God's testimony through Jesus to John's disciples about Jesus. The gospel message is not delineated here. Matthew doesn't record that for us, but we know what the gospel message is. The gospel message is that God saves sinners through the atoning sacrifice of his son at the cross. Here this morning, we're going to remember what Jesus did, that he went to a cross and he hung on a cross for a period of six hours. And for everybody who had put their trust in him as their savior and their master, their Lord, he would absorb within his own body for them on their behalf, God's anger and God's wrath against them. That's what Christ would do. So if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, I invite you 
when you take the elements, take them and hold them and remember what Christ did on your part. Remember the gospel message that he saves people who are reconciled to God through his blood and his death on the cross. If you're here this morning and you're not a follower of Jesus, I want to point your attention to verse 6. Jesus says, Blessed is he who does not take offense at me. Jesus is referring there to himself being a stumbling block to people. The person who does not take offense at Jesus is the one for whom Jesus is not an obstacle. There is no obstacle in their life to submitting to Jesus Christ as master and Lord of themselves. They're happy to live their life with Jesus as their master. That person is blessed. What Jesus is saying here on the other side of that is that the person who is not blessed is the person who, for some reason in their life, is an obstacle to submitting to Jesus as their Savior and their Lord. So if you are here this morning and Jesus is not your master, he is not your Lord, there is some obstacle in your life, I want to invite you to do one thing, and that is to take this time to think carefully about Jesus' claims about himself and think about what it is about yourself that causes you to see Jesus as an obstacle in your life. For the rest of us, I want you to know that this is a time to remember Jesus, to observe him. When the elements come to you, take them, hold them. When you've prepared your heart, take the elements on your own. I will close our time in prayer in a few minutes.